There was a time not too long ago when Netflix looked like this. And when we were all feeling like this. Hey guys, today, just two days after I signed up for my free trial, Netflix has already sent me my first DVD I put in my queue. Um, that's ridiculously fast, first of all. Now, if it takes more than two seconds for our film to buffer, we are pissed. It's hard to imagine in these early Netflix days that it would turn into this, with so many of their own shows and movies. In 2016, their new content was made up of 32% Netflix originals. In 2018, that number rose to 51%. In other words, out of all the content they added in 2018, over half was a Netflix original. But all of this leads me to a show called You. If you've never heard of it, it's a psychological thriller that follows a young bookstore manager that becomes obsessed with an aspiring writer and he's willing to do, who will do anything, including murder, to secure a relationship. It's an intriguing show, but the backstory of how the show ended up on Netflix is just as intriguing and just might signal a change in TV forever. 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 The you creators write the show for Showtime. Showtime passes and they take it to Lifetime. Lifetime really digs the show, so they order an entire season, and then Lifetime puts their marketing machine behind the show to get the word out. The cast and crew do a ton of press, and Lifetime even makes a bold move of confidence. The show has already been picked up for a second season before the first one even airs, so congrats on that. Finally, the show is released in September 2018. The ratings are respectable, but not amazing. However, the reviews are all very good. You is the latest addition to Greg Berlanti's producing Empire in the Making, and it is also a stalking disaster. Well, almost all were very good. But as the season progresses, the viewership declines and continues to fall flat. It's an expensive show for Lifetime if it's not going to bring in exceptional ratings. They simply can't afford season two, as promised. The producer, Greg Berlanti, begs the network to stay with the show and keep season two alive. But Lifetime doesn't see it. They pull the plug. But without any time passing, someone does see it. That someone, of course, is Netflix. They purchase the show and they promise the creators, yes, we will make a second season. In late December, Netflix releases the show with their Netflix original banner. And then I'll let this search on Google Trends explain what happens next. You, overnight, literally overnight, goes from being a flop that no one was watching to a sensation where it seemed like everyone was watching. The latest thriller that is creeping the country out. That's right. <laughs> Top five reasons to watch you on Netflix. So, Autora, los creadores y el actor Ben Batchley, how a show can totally dominate pop culture. So how can the same show with mediocre ratings suddenly be turned into a massive hit? A show that had a whole life on Lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's on Netflix and it's blown up. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I mean, that's a, that says a lot about the way youth consume media, I guess. Yeah. You know, it's like the internet is changing everything. Yeah. There are many factors here, but let's look at three with marketing, the reach, and the ads. Let's take a look at the trailers from Lifetime and Netflix and compare their approach. Mainly notice how they hint that the main character, Joe, is not a good guy. Lifetime is way more ambiguous about this, while Netflix hooks the audience immediately, letting you know this is not a typical love story. Here's Lifetime. drink sometime sure I won't. so we're 30 seconds in and it looks and feels like a romantic relationship now let's take a look at netflix i believe in love at first sight boom we're three seconds in and netflix immediately tells us something is off with our lead character he's creeping across the street he's talking in an eerie voice and of course we have the dramatic mysterious score now let's take a look at the last part of each trailer. Notice how Lifetime still dances around telling us that Joe is not a good guy. I know you. You need someone to take care of you. The things you do for love, right? 
to think I'm some kind of magnet for, like, dudes with serious issues. Yeah. It's an epidemic. Now, listen to how Netflix approaches this, using dialogue to literally tell us something is not right with Joe. Are you following me? I'm on to you. I won't let her get in the way of us. I think you were hiding something. You're being crazy. Honestly, you're lucky to have me. Every relationship has its obstacles to overcome, right? So there's more clarity in the Netflix trailers that hook us sooner, which could lead to more people watching. But let's be honest, trailers are not the sole reason for watching a show. Sometimes it's as simple as commercial interruptions. I mean, these people actually tweeted out this, turned off Lifetime because of the ads. So that's an easy win for Netflix. Finally is the reach. I mean, Netflix dwarfs the Lifetime audience reach. And more importantly than numbers is the ability for Netflix to send you a show recommendation to your phone that's personalized to your taste that you can tap on and watch it, not later, but immediately. They know your taste incredibly well. And as seen from my friend Thomas Flight's essay, they know it probably better than you think. This personalization is everywhere. Search results are personalized. Think what shows up in the trending now row is the same for everyone? Nope, those are trending items chosen just for you. These three screenshots were taken from different profiles on the same day at the same time. They even show you the continue watching row based on whether or not they think you're in the middle of binging something or in the mood for something new. So it's now proven that Netflix can literally take a dead show with zero fanfare and transform it into a meme-worthy hit. It's important to distinguish you from other shows that Netflix has reignited, like Arrested Development and Fuller House. They were already big hits with many fans. However, you had very little fanfare or external value. With this success, you can guarantee Netflix is on the prowl for great one-season shows that previously flopped. So this begs the question, how would things have differed had Netflix been around forever? You know, like when your favorite show only ran for one season before getting trashed and canceled. What shows would that be? Let us know in the comments below, because who knows, maybe you will see them again soon, but this time as a Netflix original, getting a second chance at life, just like you. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this, hit the subscribe button and let us know which single season shows you hope come back soon. Cheers.